Dr. Michael Smith, who received his PhD from the University of Manchester, first came to Canada in 1956 to study nucleic chemistry with Dr. Gobin Corona at UBC. Some of my friends said you're crazy because it, it was well known that that chemistry was much more difficult than standard organic chemistry. But I thought, well, I, it'd be fun to do something different. And that changed my life probably more than anything else. By the time Dr. Corona received his Nobel Prize in 1968, Smith had already begun to develop the technique that would see him similarly recognized some 27 years later. If you could uh, design one little bit of DNA that you'd made in a test tube, it should complement a naturally occurring piece and allow you to isolate it out of the mixture of thousands or tens of thousands of, of other nucleic acids. We knew that we could form a little double helix where one strand was, say, a piece equivalent to a piece of DNA, and the other strand was the true complement of that, but in the middle of that, there was something that was wrong, and, and yet you would still form a double helix. Site-directed mutagenesis, the deliberate and predictable altering of the coding sequence of genes, has become a standard technique in biotechnology. It has been used to develop human insulin from bacteria or yeast and has advanced the study of gene-related illness. In 1993, it earned Dr. Michael Smith the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Several people were involved in doing it, and, uh, and yet the prize isn't shared amongst all of them. You try and share it as much as you can by, by taking them to the thing, but obviously that doesn't actually give them the prize per se, and, uh, and I, you can't do anything about it. I'd participate in work that um, two other people won Nobel Prizes. I never felt that I wanted to share in it, you know, in this sense. I was just happy that it happened to them, so I, I hope my colleagues feel the same way about their relationship with me. With his share of the prize money, Smith set up an endowment to support schizophrenia research, the advancement of women in science, and science outreach. During his public appearances, he often encounters the misconceptions surrounding genetic engineering. But I think people have to realize that humans as a society have been breeding uh, things for their own good f since society exists. I mean, we've been breeding animals uh, to provide food. We've been br breeding animals for work. We've been breeding animals as pets. So it, it's not new. And uh, the thing that has, has concerned me that uh, has, has been this tendency to say, oh, genetic engineering has created all these things as new activities. But in fact, if you reflect on things, they're not. Dr. Smith is the director of the University of British Columbia Biotechnology Laboratory and the founding director of the Network of Centers of Excellence in Protein Engineering. His approach to Nobel celebrity distinguishes him as an ideal role model for young Canadian scientists. I guess the downside of it, which I try and avoid falling into, is a trap of people look on you as somewhat different, you know, that you're wiser than other people, that you're an expert on all sorts of things. And of course, you're not. You know a fair bit about your area of science, and you've been lucky enough to do a, a crucial experiment or make a, a, a crucial discovery uh, earlier than other people perhaps would have done in that area of science, but otherwise you're just a normal human being, and, uh, and, uh, and you, you shouldn't allow yourself to let other people think you are, allow yourself to think you're anything more than that. Uh, otherwise, I think you could get into trouble.